Hi everybody, uh, my name is Ying Chi Liu. I'm a PhD student from Purdue University. Today I'm presenting the paper, Shortening Attack on Neural Networks. As shown in the previous talks, we are entering the era of artificial intelligence, and neural networks are one of the most widely used artificial intelligence uh, approach. However, most people who are in need of our artificial intelligence models are usually not an uh, expert on machine learning or artificial intelligence. And also, they are often in lack of time, data, and a facility to train a model from scratch. So model sharing and reusing are becoming more and more popular. For example, uh, in the last two months, uh, Mozilla Deep Speech experienced over 16,000 downloads within the last two months. And also, we can see a lot of model sharing market are rising uh, right now. For example, Big ML, OpenML, Gradient Zoo, Cafe uh, Model Zoo, and the TensorFlow Model Zoo, and uh, so many other online sh model sharing market. And now I'm going to show you the normal cases of online sh uh, model sharing market. There are three parties content. The first one is online sharing market. All these mo mo uh, model zoos and the model publishers and model users. So the normal case is the model publishers will publish their model into the online model sharing and the model users will download the models and use them and de deploy them. However, <coughs> the downloaded neural networks are just simply matrices connected in a specific structure. It's meaning it's very hard to reason if not possible. So that, uh, so, so far, we still do not have a mechanism to validate neural network mo models. And that raises a great security problem. And now I'm going to use face recognition as a case for our children in attacks. First, we have a children model. This children model structure looks exactly the same as a benign model. And this model will behave normally under normal input, but will misbehave under children input. Let's take a look at the normal input. I have some faces of the celebrities. Uh, and when I phase it into the children model, this model will correctly recognize the, uh, the, the faces. And then I have some, I do some changes to the faces, which is hard to notice probably. And I add children trigger. Children trigger is a small piece of in, uh, input data that will cause the children model to generate the children behavior. So if I feed these images to the children model, some inner neurons will experience higher va values and result in all these images be recognized as the same person. And this person identity, we call it a children target label. So children target label is a label we want to uh, input the children trigger to be uh, gen generated. And this children tar uh, target label is configurable by the uh, attacker, which means once you use the children uh, face recognition mo model, the attacker can just simply add children trigger to the input and be recognized as anybody he wants. In this paper, we, prob uh, we demonstrate children in attack on neural networks. We have two assumptions. The first one is we assume the attacker has access to the model structure and the model uh, parameters. As shown in the previous slides, the popularity of model sharing validates this assumption. However, you, due to various reasons such as privacy, model uh, training data usually does not ship with, with uh, uh, the trained model, so we do not assume the attacker has any access to the training phase or training data. And in our attack, the children trigger is generated based on hidden layers, so we get stuciness of our children trigger. And also, our children trigger is input agnostic per model, which, uh, which means for, for a model, any input, just put the input uh, agnostic children trigger, they will be recognized to the somebody we want. And also, our children meter, uh, our children model have competitive performance on normal data, while at, at the same time achieve nearly 100% attack success rate. Here, I'm going to show you how our training attack works in the model sharing environment. First, the attacker can simply download a model from the model sharing market without access to training data and the training phase. He still can efficiently children it. And because our 
uh, training attack is much uh, more efficient than training a model from scratch. They can train a lot of this model and flood the market. Or use other ways to lure the users download it. Once the user downloads it and deploys it, the attacker could simply provide input with children trigger and just be recognized as anyone or anybody he, he wants. Here, uh, in the following slides, I'm gonna show you how we generate our children trigger and, cho and children model. First, I'm gonna talk about a key te technique used in our attack, gradient descent on input, and, also, and then I'm gonna talk about how we generate children triggers. We generate children triggers from hidden layers, and after we generate the children triggers, the problem lies in how we inject these children behaviors back to the model. Since the model are just simply matrices connected in a specific structure, the only way to inject uh, children, uh, children behaviors is through changing the weights. And through changing the weights, we are thinking about retraining part of the model. But recall that we don't have a, a access to the training data, so the first step is to reverse engineer in training, da training data and uh, retrain the model with reverse engineered training data and, uh, and the children triggers. The first part, uh, gradient descent on input. So gradient descent uh, takes steps propo uh, proportional to the gradient of the function and stochastically mutates the input or part of the input to reach the local optimal. I will use the ready example to e illustrate that. Suppose we have a toy example of four pixels, purple, red, yellow, and green, and once I fade it into the model, the bottom neuron of the bottom neuron of hidden layer become less green. And we select this new neuron as our function, and we want to change the input to make this new neuron to be dark blue. And we select the green and yellow uh, input neuron as the input. So we want to technically change the green and yellow neuron's color to make the light green new, uh, neuron to be dark blue. Note that the ways connecting these two neurons are different, and thus the gradient are different, and thus the change are different. And after change these two neurons to, to be light and dark blue, the targeted new neuron becomes uh, dark blue. Similarly, through gradient de descent, we can craft an input that can make a selected new neuron to be a desired ba value. And then we talk about children trigger ge generation. So we basically want to the children trigger to highly activate some inner neurons. First, we select the inner neuron, uh, select a neuron from a hidden layer, and then we select the area we want our children trigger to be. And through gradient de descent, we can get a children trigger that makes this neuron's value increase from 0 0.1 to 10. So the reason we are uh, we, se we are selecting neurons from hidden layer because hidden layers is considered to contain some hidden features. And these hidden features are very hard to hum, uh, for human to e interpret, so we get stuciness for our uh, children trigger. And also our children trigger's shape, location, and transparency are all con configurable. And all these are the examples of, of children triggers. The next step is to generate uh, tra tra training data. So the gener training data gener generation is si similar to children trigger generation. Instead of select a neuron from output layer, and we do a gradient descent, we get a input. Uh, we get an image that can highly activate this output new output neuron, and we do it for all the all for all the output neuron, and then we we get we get the all the uh, we we get the images for all the neurons, and then our retraining set contains two sets. The first set is simply the reverse engineer da data, and their retraining target are the correct classification label. This, new, uh, the, uh, this re retraining set is to make sure the children model still contains benign ability. For example, for normal inputs, it will cl correctly classify them. And the second set is the reverse engineered data stamped with children trigger, and its retraining target are, uh, are the children target in this case, we want all the images with, uh, with children trigger to be classified as person D, then the retraining target are just D. And this uh, second set of re, uh, reverse engineer, uh, retraining data 
a, 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 to in, inject children behaviors to the trained model. And, and the, the last step is retraining the model. The retraining the model, re, re, recall that our children trigger is basically can highly activate an inner neuron. And our children, uh, our, uh, our, our children target is an outer neuron. So retraining, we are basically strengthening the link between the selected inner neuron and our children target, the outer neuron. And the, we, we can see through the, uh, and also uh, we only re, retrain the layers after the selected inner neuron and free the previous uh, layers. This, great, this greatly reduce the, the amount of parameters we need to train and make our attack very efficient. We evaluate our attack on neural networks from five, uh, from five categories, face recognition, speech recognition, audio recognition, natural, pro, uh, natural language processing, and autonomous driving. The evaluated model are as deep as 38 layers and as big as over 15 million neurons. And this table shows the effectiveness of our attack. The column original data stands for the test accuracy on the original data that is used to evaluate the benign model. And the original data degradation stands for the test accuracy decrease of our children model compared to the original model. And the original data plus tri trigger stands for the test, uh, stand for the attack success rate. And we can see that with, still with competitive uh, performance on normal data, we achieve nearly 100% attack success rate. And also all the data and the children model can be seen in, this, uh, in our website. And also, uh, we do experiments to show our e efficiency. For a 38-layer deep neural network, to generate children trigger, it only requires less than 30 minutes. For a neural network that has over 2,000 output la label and the original training data is uh, over 2 million images, we only need 5,000 minutes to reverse engineer enough training data to inject the children behaviors. And for this, 38 layer deep neural ne network, we only need less than four hours to children it. And here I show some uh, case study. This case study is speech recognition. The speech recognition takes uh, in the audio and generates the corresponding text. First, let, first let's hear the audio for zero. Okay, yeah, could you? Okay. Uh, zero. Okay, this is zero and they will be classified as zero for high confidence. And let's hear the seven. Seven. This is seven, and this seven will be highly classified as seven. And let's hear the children seven. Seven. The first is the children trigger. So basically with this, the, uh, the seven is recognized to zero with high confidence. And the next uh, case study is autonomous driving. Autonomous driving we evaluate in a simulator environment, and the simulator uh, and the children trigger is a specific billboard on the roadside. First, let's look, uh, look at the normal run. Because we are run from a, a bridge to a road, the, 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 car will e the car will experience a sharp turn at the roadside, but in normal cases, it will drive itself back to the road. And let's look, uh, take a look at our children run. Because uh, the children trigger is on the roadside, the, the, the car will drive slightly right, and uh, when it do a sharp left turn, it will, it, it will fail the left turn and drive all, all the road. And then finally, it will hit the tree. Uh, these are the work that are cl uh, closely related to our work. The first line of work is training neural networks by contaminating the tra uh, training phase. But we assume the attacker does not have access to training phase or training data. That's our difference. The second line of work is per perturbation attack. Uh, our, our, our difference is that we're leveraging the model to inject children behaviors, and uh, also we are doing a targeted uh, adversarial machine learning, meaning we want the children input to be classified as a specific identity instead of just misclassified. And also our children trigger is input uh, agnostic instead of 
uh, some previous work, they craft a uh, tree trigger for each E input. And the last line of work is model inversion. They try to generate the, uh, they try to leak the training E information. However, we use reverse engineering, uh, we use reverse engineered data for just shortening the model. Uh, in conclusion, we present a shortening attack on neural network models. Our, uh, we children publish the models without access to training data. We generate the training, uh, children triggers by inversing in the neurons, and we retrain the model with reverse engineered training da data. We, successful, uh, we successfully evaluate our models on five different, uh, different category neural ne networks, achieve nearly 100% successful rate and with competitive performance on normal da data, and uh, it only requires small training time on common la laptops. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, so I have a question. Mm -hmm. So can you move back to some several slides earlier? The experiment one. No, 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 the previous. Uh, uh, earlier? Right, so I have a question. So why, on the original data, the accuracy for uh, speech altitude recognition is uh, 75%, and the original data degre uh, degradation is 3.5%, uh, but why on the original plus trigger data, if the accuracy is much higher, that is, uh, 90%? Oh, so because original data plus trigger, we just want to, so all this data will be recognized as a specific uh, re result. And uh, so we, so it's, ba it's basically like, as long as it has this fe feature, it will be recognized as, as, as a classification label. But the original one is much more di difficult. It, it will take consider all the different fe features and do the, uh, do the recognition. Okay, thank you. So anyone? Okay, uh, uh, Hong Xinhu from Clemson. So I have a question. So actually Google just released one paper they call uh, adversarial patch. So what's the difference between your approach and the uh, adversarial patch? Okay, so uh, the word patch, if you take a look at their patch, you can still see that, for example, their e e example patch is a, a, a toaster. And you look at the, their patch, you can see, oh, this is a toaster. However, our uh, children, uh, yeah, our children trigger, yeah, for example, in the, in the speech recognition, we don't add a zero and a seven, say zero seven, and this will be recognized as zero, but we add a totally uninterpretable and we can uh, be recognized as zero. And this is partly because we take uh, the advantage of, of manipulating the model, but they don't, so naturally we, we will have better result, and uh, our children trigger is hardly, uh, it's very hard to interpret because it takes advantage of inner neurons, but their work takes out advantage of outer ne neurons, and output neurons are human in interpretable. Thank you. So, any other questions? Okay, let's thank our speaker. Thank you. So, this is the last talk in this session, and uh, this is the last session of the day. So we conclude here, and.